Hey, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> hey, Pensy friends, welcome back to another new video. Or hi, if you're new, my name is David. Welcome to this crazy Plenty channel. We upload a lot of Plenty content, and I have my crazy cat so that every single time I film, she never fails to be here with us. Say hi, mama. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yes yeah, so you guys can see i'm going to be taking you guys along it's going to be a very long video i don't know because it's not planned but i just know it's going to be almost a one hour long video so if you guys enjoyed it make sure you give it a big thumbs up just go if you haven't so you don't miss any other plenty content and a little background information i live in apartments in an apartment setting i do have a plant room which is not so plentified right now but in the fall in the late fall i'm gonna put all the plants in the plant room so it's gonna look like a crazy insane jungle and i'm gonna also show you guys how i went to over my plants so if you don't want to miss those videos don't forget to subscribe this is literally going to be a complete complete house plant apartment tour <laughs> also the house uh, the apartment i'm still cleaning it it was just it was messy y'all like <laughs> Okay, I clean every day, it gets messy because I'm a messy ass person and my cat is telling me to hurry up. So, um, yes, it's real life, okay? Um, don't judge me, okay? Um, <laughs> this is a safe place. And also, please ignore the shirt. I got it from Walmart. It's just a basic shirt. Um, I kind of like what it says, but I hope nobody gets offended. Uh, so, yeah. So, any without any further ado, let's just get started. Alrighty, so it is literally the next day. I keep on procrastinating on filming this video because I'm just so scared. It's, it's just always come out so long. I never know when to shut up. <laughs> but I'm just gonna get started. So over here we have a variegated, variegated, Lord have mercy, a lemon lime maranza. It's a cutting. Now I know it doesn't look its best, but the only reason why I have it is because I love looking at the roots. So usually I'm a big foliage person, like that's what attracts me on having plants but on this case it's all about the roots so this can look a little bit crispy but as long as it, as the roots look this sexy i just want to have it like this so yes it's, i feel like it's kind of inhumane i feel like i'm like a bad person but it's something more something different and interesting we have a anthurium that blooms and um nothing really interesting about this plant I honestly, it's one of those plants that I just do not care about so much. Here is some pieces from the Burgundy Maranza that I got from River Gardens a while back. They were like really, really bad. Usually I toss them out, but it's one of my favorite plants. So I decided to place it in water, let it develop some roots, and then I'll repot it. So, because I know I can have more plants. I just, I really do love the Burgundy Maranza, you guys. It's one of my favorite, favorite plants. Over here we have a tiniki it's a rubber tree i believe i'm not so sure but it's really really pretty and i got this one at walmart ended up reporting it to ricotta pots on one of our recent videos it is one of my favorite plants i just love the leaves and the variegation um it was infested with mellybugs slash as well with spider mites i spread it down with um okay, it's clean that's from the damage i spread it down with neem oil i rinsed it off like crazy and now she's looking pretty, pretty good. Here is a new leaf, as you, as you guys can see, and it's gonna put out another one. We have my orchid, and then we have my jewel orchid. Um, kind of funny how like they're side by side. It did got burned. Um, that was like, oof, like the beginning of this year. But now she looks so much better, and she's putting out a new leaf, which makes me super, super happy. We have a well-bent Sensevaria. This was one of the newest leaves that it put out, and I am praying and hoping hoping for more leaves because i really really do love this plant and it's crazy how this plant was so expensive and very difficult to find and don't even get me started with the variegated one but now they have it all over um very affordable on etsy and one of my favorite local nurseries um they have so you guys can hear my stomach i just had some tea and it's messy with my stomach a little bit but um i they have the barricaded one they sold out within like two days i believe i don't know but it's i just i really do love the wolf and sensevaria just sensevarias in general they're like so easy to look after they're very basic but i really do love them so much because they're just such really easy plants to look after when i say easy i mean like not not as in like you can't kill it because you really, really can. You can kill it with root rot. That's literally the only way you can kill it. As well as just like placing it in no lights. But even then, that's how you kill any plant. Um, the reason why it's one of my one of the easiest is because you can literally just neglect it. I just literally just neglect the plant and it would thrive. 
that switch is one of my favorites because it's very easy to look after. You don't gotta do so much like some other plants that need high humidity or maintenance or trim or propagations or etc. Same plants don't need all that. Over here we have a Christmas cactus. I keep calling it Thanksgiving cactus, but it's not. It is a Christmas cactus and it made it bloomed. I don't know. I think it was when I moved into this apartment to started to bloom and I'm hoping that I can make it bloom coming up i believe these bloom twice a year i am not so sure but it's very ugly because <laughs> i've been neglecting it neglecting it so much and now i have it in this really nice beautiful urban jungle pot this is not from ever jungle the plants i guess ended up repotting in this pot um because i like the way it looks when i bought this pot it came with my lemon lime maranta which then ended up getting repotted right i don't know if you guys can see that but i ended up putting in a terracotta pot but yes so i have it in the window over here i thought neglecting it would make it dry but to be honest i feel like i gotta stay on top of this one more on watering because um it's not looking so hot maybe i haven't watered it for a while so that's possibly why and then over here at the very top we have my um i was gonna say very good string of hearts i wish my string of hearts i had it for i don't even know at this point like maybe two years or one and a half year. Um, she's very, very long. I ended up trimming her a lot last year. And um, I decided when I moved in over here that I wasn't gonna chop her up anymore. And when I was in the other house in my rental home, she was blooming like crazy. And since I placed it over here, she's not blooming that much. I don't know if it goes the time already passed by, but she is growing a lot. And I only water her like once a month, maybe twice a month. And I do fertilize it with micro grow. But yes, yeah, my string of hearts. I love the way it looks. My boyfriend says it looks kind of cute. Like it's like a little curtain. And I totally agree. At the very top over here, we have my variegated Maranto. One of my newest plants and one of my favorite plants of all time this was on my wish list for the longest period of time and i know that coastal farm sells them in the big box stores but i never had the luck to find them and now and look it's putting out a flower and when i started rainbow gardens i ended up getting a four inch pot which is outside and then i had i saw this one which is an hanging basket for 24.99 now it was trailing and i ended up chopping it a lot because i decided i was gonna sell the cuttings but my boyfriend told me, and it's a lot easier as well, on making mother plants. So I decided to make two um, massive mother plants, which I will show you guys down the line. But um, I just, I love this plant. I really, really do. Like it's, I love irrigation. You already know me. And one of my easiest, the uh, basic marantel on the very bottom shelf is one of the easiest plants I have ever had. And my mom is calling me. So I'm gonna go and see you in a bit. Alrighty, so I'm back. And of course, the ice cream person always passes by every time I film. It is, what time is it? I think it's like, uh, it's 4.55. So that's always when I end up filming. But over here we have a snake plant, a Birkins, and some Vanda orchids, which I honestly love so much. But um, this is probably not the best way to care for them. So I need to go, ooh, I don't know if that's, ooh. Oh, okay. I don't even know if that's mold or just because I'm saying when the roots get dry. Yeah, okay. That was mold. But whenever the roots get dry, they end up starting to look white. And that's when and it makes sense because I haven't watered that, those orchids for a while. See how those orchids are a little bit like green tinted? That's because I just ended up watering that one last week. When I, the way I water my orchids, I get like a container. I put the entire orchid plant, like that pot on the container and I let it soak up for like a couple minutes, let the bark absorb water, let the stems, um, the stems, the roots, the air roots absorb as much water as they can. And then I just put it to the side and let all the water rinse out. And then that's how I do it. So, and it's been doing pretty, pretty good. So that's pretty fun. Over here we have my massive piece of leaf. Was looking very, very droopy, but I already ended up giving her some water, as you guys can see. And um, yeah. Over here we have my Arisonia. I feel like this is one of the rare ones. I saw somewhere that this is like uh, one of the, I, it's very basic to me. It looks very hideous, <laughs> but um, supposedly if the frustrations are closer to the, the, the line, like in the middle of the leaf, it's, I think it's Laranta, something like that. Um, but yeah, no. And the reason I say expensive and rare is because I looked it up online and I think it is this one. A lot of people that find them, they're just like in the big box stores, so which makes no sense to me. But I see cuttings going for like the 30s for like a little small little leaf. And I'm just like, I'm so confused. And then I was doing some research and supposedly it's like one of the, 
like a different like it's like the same family but like this this and that i don't know but here she is i ended up putting her to the top uh and just let her do oh my god that's really really dirty i ended up cleaning the room the room fan you guys saw that video I haven't cleaned this one yet i think i have to it's getting really bad but um yeah i just have her like doing her thing over here because i don't know what to do with her she's not my favorite but as you guys can see the more like she gets the deeper i mean the more illustrations she puts out like every other plant and the brick of the leaves and of course over here this is not getting enough light um they're really really small and my boyfriend's calling me out so i'll see y'all in a bit ready i'm back <laughs> Okay, so where were we at? But yes, this is uh, Swiss cheese or AKA Adi, Adi Sony. Anyways, over here we have an asparagus fern, which is struggling a little bit, as you guys can see with the crispy spots. I'm not sure why, but it is putting out a lot of new leaves. And I think it's maybe dry. Oh, she's bone dry. Look at that. Honestly, I should honestly have her like really close by Paraka. So I don't forget, cause it's like really like in the corner. Cause it looks really good right there. And I know she loves the lights. But I always forget to water her, she gets lost. Um, right over here in the back, we have a Monjulu Potos slash Marie Queen Potos. Um, no, 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 my bad. Monjulu Potos only. And then we have a stem that is reverting to just a basic green one, I believe. Not sure, but that's on that. And I'm just not feeling it with this plant anymore. I just, I don't want it. I don't know what it is because it's in the pot. I might just, I know, I love the color pink, y'all. But I don't know if I like it on this plant. I might just give it on a terracotta pot. And even then, if I just don't like it anymore, then I'm gonna go and give it away because I feel bad for it. I, I think it deserves a lot of love. Over here, we have a Never Never plant. Um, some propagations that I did on my snake plants. And then this interesting perilea, a pepperonia, a cute little succulent, another pepperonia, a pincushion, a pilea. We have some snake plants, propagations in the back that are not looking so hot. We have an ivy over there, which I'm starting to hate ivies now. And then we have these really fun golden portals that I just recently got. And what really caught my eye was these massive, beautiful colored leaves. I think it's a Hawaiian portals. I am not so sure, but look at that. They're just so like massive. And like the variegation is just so like, like how can I say like, very yellowish i love it i really really do and i want to give it more lights because i want to develop more big leaves um but yeah that's on that we have another fern wood sensoveria and nutritus kentii a syngonium maria syngonium then we have some air plants at the bottom i love me some air plants and i think i'm missing one oh here it is <gasps> look he's putting out some new leaves oh that is so cute <laughs> Okie dokie. And then at the very top, we have Adriancina. And then we have this pot that has some neon potos and sebo blue that, that I did by propagations a while back. And as you guys can see, you get the paraca. This was all propagated by nodes. And when I did it, I thought it was gonna look so cool, like the sebo blue with the bright neon potos, but eh, it's whatever. Kind of looks kind of cool. And then we have uh, this massive asparagus fern. Out of all the other asparagus ferns, this is one of the easiest ones. I am not sure what it's called, but it's a very, very easy asparagus fern. It's very forgiving if you underwater it, unlike some other ones that are just so finicky. But I love it. And this is just a new leaf that put out. Um, it's a very beautiful, beautiful plant. And I ended up dividing it a while back. Um, if I didn't, I feel like it would look so much bushier, but even then, my mom has it, and hers is looking lovely as well. Over here we have some, uh, Chinese evergreens in the back. Really fun and pretty. Some snake plants. Snake plants and terracotta pots just make me so happy. As you guys can see, it is putting out some adorable pups. Here is this interesting fern that I have a love-hate relationship with. Here's another, um, pepperonia. Then we have this Dark Lord Philodendron. Putting out a cute little new leaf, looks like a high heel. Then we have this really fun Drancina that I recently got, and I ended up replying this terracotta pot. Yeah, I'm just loving terracotta pots so much. Looks a little bit dirty, I gotta go and rinse it out. But I just love how this looks. It looks so pretty. I love me some Drancinas. And then, of course, my beautiful mother, 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 mother. What well, she is, she's like a grand, grand, grandmother, because I have propagated so many babies out of this girl, Lee. And it's my silver blue. I love her so much. She's been with me for the longest period of time. She was one of my first plants that I have ever, ever gotten. And um, yeah, I love her. She's my baby. 
Um, some uh, Chinese money plants in the back. We have this Gondapsis, which I also have a love-hate relationship with. Here is a, um, right there, I don't know if you guys can see. It's my crocodile fern. And when I bought it, well, it was a gift from my boyfriend. And when he, when he got it for me, it had mold developing all over the plants. I don't know how, but it was on the crown. And I did as much as I could to bring it back to life. And it's coming back. I don't know if you guys can remember from the beginning of my videos. It was very bad looking and it wasn't putting out any new leaves. And ended up repotting it. And um, it was looking so much better. Here is my Marble Queen Potos. I believe it is a Marble Queen. Such a beautiful plant. Love how like... It's just such a simple, classy looking plant. I love it. I really do. And then over here, we have my stunghorn fern. Does not looking so hot, but hey, he's right there. I have my red maranta. I have a calathe over here. Looking gorgeous. And then we have this um, red conjo, I believe. It is one of those, it wasn't the Birkins, Costa Farm Pots, but it was reverting back. And I love it. I had to get it. My mom got it for me, actually, this one, and I love it. Over here, we have a lemon amaranta, which is not looking the best, but here she is. It's, honestly, guys, my marantas are also the same as with this one. I don't think I have repotted these for a for two years. Oh, my God. <gasps> Saying that, I, I got, like, chills. Like, why haven't I repotted these? So they have been in their coastal farm pots for almost two years. Hey, they look pretty good. <laughs> it's definitely time to get them a new pot so I'm um, gonna you know, do that in, I don't know when but uh, it's on the list now we have this really fun photos that I propagated I don't know what it is I really don't people say it's a global green some say it's a monjulu photos that is reverting you know say but I do love the way it looks and photos are just really I don't know why, but they do really good in low light conditions. It makes me super, super happy because a lot of the times I don't have any plants I can put like in the dark spots and um, it makes me sad, but potos never fail. Also the Maranta is another easy, easy plant that is amazing in low light conditions. Like look at that. Look at that. She is so happy. I'm so proud of her. And when I first reported on this plant, it was only like three plants. And after it like going over and just chopping and placing it back in the pot, it made a very beautiful bushy look. So super proud of this plant. Can't wait for my burger and so to do the exact same thing. We have a Birkins over here just chilling and vibing, doing his own thing. <laughs> and then acá arriba, over here on top, we have my Brazil philodendron. I also got this girly when I got my super blue. And um, my silver blue was longer, by the way, but I chopped it so much like I already told you. My Brazil as well, and it's still just doing her thing. Um, beautiful. I just, I love this plant. It puts out like art for me, and every leaf is different. They're never the same. Um, I just, it makes me happy. Plants that just do great and thrive. Like, look at that little splash of like dark green, everything else is like nice. And bright verdito. I love it. And it's putting out new leaves. Like, look at that. <laughs> oh my god, Brazos are amazing. And they're finally starting to get like the hype they deserve, especially the silver strap and cream splash. And I think the other one looks like a Gabby, or is a Gabby, and that's what sure. But those are getting very, 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 very um, expensive right now. We have this really fun Ivy Paraka. She's. Out of all the ivies, this one isn't giving me that many problems. She's stressing me out, but not as much as the other ivies that I have. We have this really interesting philodendron. I forgot what it's called. I always, always, always forget. I don't know why, but there's some plants that I just, it's almost impossible, impossible for me to remember their names without a name tag. And I promise you that one had a name tag. Pero lo quite, because I, I thought I remembered it, but I didn't. But damn, look at these leaves, girl. Like. Low light condition, conditions, and let's just putting out a new one. Oh my god, I'm so proud. Over here, we have these really fun potos. Again, with the potos, they just make me so happy. I used to love philodendrons, but in low light conditions, like look at this green leaf. This has been in here for the longest period of time, and it's just not getting the most light. I just recently put these grow lights. This again, this was not getting enough light, but look at them. They're not getting small, like some philodendrons. They act up when they get enough light. Just such a beautiful plant. 
and the variegation like it's just so beautiful and i love how hard the leaves are very very stunning i just love plants that have the most beautiful variegation they make me so happy over here we have my jungle boogie philodendron I was having some problems when i first bought it but i think i fixed it started to put up some better leaves proud of him we have this fern oh my god crocodile fern no kangaroo fern <laughs> just chilling a rattlesnake calathea and at the bottom we have a golden goddess philodendron right there we have some bonnie spider plants but i got there were pups but now i place them under a little pot my raven um plant this beautiful tradescantia song of india and then this beautiful Chinese evergreen. This other really nice fuzzy succulent. I think it's called a panda. Not so sure, but it's really pretty. And then here's a mother plant of my bonnie spider, my curly spider plant. Here's another beautiful potos, like again with this beautiful massive leaves. Just God, oh, Lord have mercy. And then my lemon lime philodendron, one of my one of <laughs> i have so many favorites y'all i'm sorry but i love this plant i really really do so pretty and then that really funny <laughs> that really funny succulent we have another maranta the mini maranta at the bottom we have some birds nest ferns over here this is a victoria birds nest ferns i believe and we have this other one that's looking pretty thirsty and then we have another kangaroo fern we have another pepperoni at the back and then over here we have a basic piece of leaf. Those are all the plants that I have in the plants room. That not that many because a lot of them are in the balcony as well in the kitchen, which you guys are going to see in a couple minutes. So yes. I forgot. I do have some plants over here that I am bottom watering, but honestly, this looks really, really pretty. But I am bottom watering my um green heart leaf philodendron and um yeah, and then my other neon potos which I just love it when it does this. People say it's reverting, but I love it. I really, really do. And look at that. That this is getting so much water. So I'm, I'm pretty sure she is pretty satisfied. And um, I might get, I mean, she literally got all the water. So that's really, really good. And I go place her back where she belongs. And um, yes, it's just really funny on potos and green heartbeat. Philodendron. <laughs> And my kitty. Baby, yes, my love. Okay, so we're gonna go back out. Please excuse the mess. Over here we have my polka dots plants. I'm gonna go turn on the lights. Okay, I'm gonna go back on. Okay, so again, all of these stuff are gonna change. Um, a lot of these plants, a lot of these stuff, because I'm just like putting on my fall decor and I wanna get it looking all nice and stuff like that. Can I go and turn off my She's a little too loud. Um, here's a polka dot begonia or begonia maculata. Ew. Why is she doing a lot? I don't like that. That's really interesting. I've never seen her doing this before. Ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> Looks weird. But I'm really surprised that she's been performing amazing in the living room. It is pretty dry and it's always pretty cold and yet she is doing amazing. Well, here we have my curly orchid cactus, I believe. Um, she's very due to get repotted. I rarely ever water her. As you guys can see, she's putting out a lot of air roots. Um, well, here we have my green heart leaf philodendron. Very, very long. <laughs> don't like how that looks, but I know it's a look. Over well, here we have another raven and then my other massive neon photos that i have grown for i think this is the other one the one you guys saw in the restroom that one is a new one that i just got like six seven months ago not so sure but it's been a, a, a pretty long time this is the same one that i got when i got my super blue and my brazil one of my first plants that i got the same day and um she's pretty pretty massive i finally ended up repotting her on this pot last year um She's looking pretty good and I'm so happy how it's just putting out these really massive big leaves. Like for me, like it's not getting enough light and yet it's still doing amazing. Just so proud of her and look, it's doing that thing that I love. <laughs> this one neon potos, the very top we have a very thirsty golden potos that needs some watering. Over here we have some cuttings of my never never plants that I need to go and very, very do to place them in some pots. 
some experiments that I did. Honestly, just for decor, here are some Arizonia Swiss cheese that never form, I believe. And then over here we have a really fun philodendron and a money tree leaf cutting that I'm not really proper cutting, I just have any for decor. And then we have my Rolly Sa Drancina because my kitty loves to munch on my um, Drancinas. Here are some um, baby Mostera Deliciosas that were given to me by a company. The same company that gave me these propagation stations, I think they're called Modern Botanical, um, gave me some cuttings. And then over here we had some Chinese evergreens as well. Thought it was some money bugs, but it wasn't. Ooh, it developed roots, and these are really need to get them some fresh water. And that's what I have on these shelves. And then over here we have a really sad looking begonia, one of my favorite ones, and I was just on the watering it and um it started looking really really bad. But I hope I can bring it back to life. Well it's it's fine. She loves looking at the view. Um, she's fine, but she was a lot more prettier when I was on top of her. But um, yeah, so really, really cool begonia. We have my variegated um, umbrella plant or Schifflera. My variegated aloe vera. And then this cactus that looks really, really bad because I was filming a TikTok <laughs> and um, she was a prop. But um, yeah, this is called a hairy something, Oldman cactus. Not so sure, but I love the little hairs. Okie dokie, now we're gonna go on this table. Over here we have this Aesonia that I'm trying to train on this moss pole. Update, I hate moss poles. Like, I hate them so much. They're just so much maintenance. Um, I might get a piece of wood. I think it might be easier. But yeah, just have this Aesonia in this pot. We have this really fun Chinese evergreen, this different bakia. A lot of these plants, they're, all, all, they're always in the nursery pots because I never take the time to repot them. Um, but now I'm starting to get better at it. I'm starting to repot all of my plants slowly, one by one. So yes, if I had the money, I would 1000% go pot shopping and buying so many pots. And I do, I know that I go a lot of times plant shopping, but it doesn't mean I buy a lot of plants, you guys. When I go plant shopping, usually it's just to get some content because you guys enjoy this kind of videos. Um, this thing keeps going, but I got... My cat is like literally scratching me. No me das wingas, mama. Damn. Whenever I'm gonna give her attention, she starts scratching me. Like, no se lo que tiene. No. Girl. Anyways, so <laughs> here's this different bakia. Really, really pretty. I got it for $14.98. But again, it does what different bakias do whenever I have them. They put out these ugly leaves. Um, over here we have this Monsera Deliciosa. Same story since um, with that Maranza that I have. I just have it for the roots. I love looking at the roots. Something different. So. Yeah, we have this Never Never plant, this other massive Never Never plant that honestly, it's a really fun, beautiful plant. I love it so much, but at the same time, mm, they have a very specific environment they prefer and when they, don't, when they don't get it, they do that. So yeah, here we have my uh, variegated Domino Peace Lily, which honestly I made it bloom and the flowers have irrigation, um, no surprise, but I didn't know that and it was so pretty, but I had to cut off the flowers because if not, it's really bad for cats and poisonous. So I had to do what I had to do to be a good, responsible cut owner. Now, I do have a lot of toxic plants if she bites them, but for some reason, my girl is smart, very sassy, but she's smart and she knows some plants that she is not supposed to bite, but she loves rubbing herself against my the massive piece lily. Not on this one, but the massive one, which I also made it bloom. And I had to chop them off because the pollen is very toxic for cats from what I've heard and um, did research on. So I just chopped them up and that's on that. But yeah, this variegated beautiful, variegated domino piece of that I got from plantarena.com on a four inch pot, ended up repotting on this six inch pot, I believe. And I think it's due for another repotting, but I love this plant so much. We have this other fun, the same cutting that I took over there. He is over here, this philodendron. And I'm trying to train it on the moss pole, but it's this is so like, I know, I know, very cringy. But yeah, I'm gonna start using palos instead of moss poles, cause um, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna, I might do another video explaining why, but I'm not gonna talk about it on this one. Over here we have this really fun Arizona. Now this one is the wide form as you guys can see, and it would develop even bigger, wider, 
and morph illustrations if I give it a moss pole, not a moss pole, but something to trail on. And it's looking a little bit yellow because I don't have a spot to place her in. Um, I might place her to the window as of now. Y'all, I'm gonna move a lot of my plants around to give them the appropriate lighting. It's really hard because I always try to like make all of my plants happy and give them the right lighting that they need to survive. But sometimes it's it's hard. It's really, really hard because I have some spots that are getting the highest quality lights, some spots that go, don't get enough light, and then I need to understand like the kind of light the plant needs, how long can the plants go without getting enough light, and stuff like that. That's always what I'm thinking about. And I want all of my plants to thrive, but it's a little bit difficult. I can use a lot of grow lights, but I can raise the light bill. I just make things very complicated in my head, so... As of now, she's gonna stay parka, and once I'm done filming this houseplant tour, I'm gonna move a lot of things around whenever I get the time, because I gotta pull some fall decor, and I also gotta go and give the plants what they like, because this is literally a south-facing window. I don't get no direct sunlight, because it's like a little pechito parka that blocks a lot of light, but in the fall and winter, you know how the sun changes? During those times, I get a lot of light going parka. And I can use that for my advantage. So I need to put some tables but I got the tremo. I don't know when I place it. I bought it because like I I thought I was gonna use it. <laughs> Cause I was gonna get skinny and this and that. You know how it is. Trying to get on a diet, you get a gym membership, but you don't really stick with it. Some of y'all that's not the case, but for me, I don't use it that much. I work at home and I thought it was gonna benefit. So I might force myself to use it because I didn't just spend two thousand dollars on nothing. And um I mean, at least my cat likes it. So I might place this in the, our bedroom, or I'm gonna talk to my boyfriend, I can put it in his room, because he has a lot of space in his gaming room. He doesn't really have a lot of stuff, just like the computer. Um, but I'm not saying, I'm not saying. It's also Christmas is coming, and I wanna have a really fun Christmas tree but I got, and I also wanna have another small Christmas tree, and I wanna decorate it blue, because that was my brother's his favorite color, and I wanna represent him. Um, so that's the plan. But uh, yeah, so this is what I have in this table. I also have this really small greenhouse that this was supposed to be publications for my bar frame, but he didn't want to do them anymore. So now I'm stuck with it. But there's some micans <clears throat> and some Arizonias, and I might just pop these up because I feel kind of bad and place a plant that might enjoy the humidity in here. Like maybe a begonia, not so sure. She is so sassy. Oh my god. Anyways, so uh, over here we have another really fun Madagascar tree. And yes, I went to Dollar Tree. I bought a lot of picture frames because I have a lot of pictures that I that I printed out. And at this wall, I want to fill it up with pictures um, of my family and my boyfriend and our two cats, our um, previous cat, which now is my mom's house because it's a whole long story, but she does a lot better. She's a lot happier over there. And my brother's did need it like some company so um they have nico we see her like every now and then and we have valentina um really massive drama queen hey, please ignore the mess in the room the um maintenance person came in he has to do some stuff in the restroom so i had to move all of my um stuff acá. but uh, this is nico <laughs> this was in our old rental apartment and um we ended up adopting her she's so cute she's the most loving cat i've ever met and this was Valentina when she was a little baby. And this was Nico. They were, yeah, you know, <laughs> the recuerdas? Um, they were like, they used to fight, you know, that's what cats do. This is Valentina. Um, I woke her up on this picture. And then here's Valentina again. Look at this plant, this one died. Um, but yeah. And then over here we have Nico. This was on our old rental apartment. And that's when, that's when I ended up placing all of my plants. But again, look, this is the same rental that I showed y'all the same pot like look at that look at the difference in the chinese evergreen that's what you guys saw croton died madagascar trees died snake plants i give it to my mom um this maranta i think it's in the where is it oh it's in the kitchen i'm gonna show it to you guys in a bit but that's nico she was just chilling we love nico yes 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 i know but yes here is the this new um drancina that i got my cat likes to floss her teeth with it um, but this one's my favorite and I don't want it to do it on this one. So my place is somewhere else and I honestly also love this pot. And this plant wasn't 50% off. So how much was it again? I think it was $24.98. So I ended up paying like $12.50 not including tax, um, which was a steal. 
But I love this one because it looks so red. The camera's not picking it up that much, but it's very beautiful. And then over here, we have a whole bunch of plants. This is right in front of the sink, which is a complete mess because I just made some food. But over, and I honestly was gonna clean it, but I just wanna get this video over with. So over here, we have a begonia. Actually, I'm gonna go and clean the, the kitchen because it's just, it's a little bit embarrassing. Alright okay, guys, so it is the next day, <laughs> but let's finish this houseplant tour. So over here we have this really fun begonia that it was from the Trinity Boys collection, and I already had this for a year. Uh, I, I got it last fall, so almost going to be a year. And this is a bad leaf, so I'm gonna put that right there. But it's a really, really pretty plant, so the back of the leaves are like really red. Especially with the light. I don't think it's the, the term is red. Maybe like maroon. But it's really pretty. And then we have this purple passion plant. I love how like fuzzy the leaves are. So fuzzy. And then this condapsis. And then this Fitonia thing is called Frankie. I'm not sure, but I know it's a Fitonia. It's really, really pretty. And then we have my Panstrip Calathea. I've struggled with this one so many times, but I think I got the hang of it. I've had it for like almost two years already and it just dies off. I chop everything off and then it comes back with new growth. And then some issues happen like spider mites or melly bugs, a lot of other like nasty pests, or it just starts getting really, really crispy. And finally, it's starting to look really, really good. Putting out a new leaf. And then we have this interesting plant. It was on my Manjulu Potos, and I believe it's reverting back because there is no white variegation at all in this plant. It just puts out like these different shades of green, and that's basically it. But I think it's pretty cool and pretty unique. So, yeah. Then we have this beautiful Maranta. Such an easy plant to look after. Also very forgiving if the soil dries out a little bit unlike some other Calatheas. Then we have my Calathea obifolia. Looking so gorgeous. I think it's already time to repot this one. The first time I got this plant, I got it from plantarena.com. It was like a 2.5 inch pot and it died. And then I was very, very sad because it's one of the most, it's such a pretty Calathea. The leaves get bigger and massive and just so impressive. But then I ended up seeing it at Rainbow Gardens. And this is the one that I got from Rainbow Gardens. I think it was like $7.99. Oh no, $8.99. And um, I'm kind of struggling with it a little bit. And it's because like I am such an underwater. I keep forgetting, which is why I have all of these plants over here. So I can remind myself to water them. Because like... Some of these, like these Fritonias, they need to have their soil moist. If not, they just die off. So, from my personal experience. And then we have another really fun Calathea. So when I got that Plantarina um, 2.5 inch pot Calathea Brifolia, it was like a trio. It was the Calathea Obifolia. It was this one, this exact one, and it was another one. Oh, oh the Rattlesnake, um, which I ended up giving it to my boyfriend. Here's this really beautiful uh, network Calathea. Such a really fun plant. I love looking at, at the interesting leaves. Really cool. And then we have this um, God, begonia. Angel wing begonia. So beautiful. Each little speck is like really shiny and pretty. And then we have this bird's nest fern. Just putting out new leaves, so that's pretty fun. And that's basically what I have on this side. Now on top of the fridge, I have a spider plant. Um, my cat is like playing with it, so. And then at the very top, we have a golden potos, which I gotta like took off the yellow leaves because it was very underwatered. I, I ended up giving it some a good soak of watering, so it's fine right now. But um, I'm gonna go and put those up there. Have a uh, ZZ plant, which is putting out a new leaf. So that's really exciting. And then we have my really fun Chinese evergreen, Silver Bay, one of my favorite Chinese evergreens. And then over here, we have this mini monstera. 
And then over here we have two different scent plants. I don't know what this one is called, but I know this one's called a fern wood santuarium. I love me some snake plants. And then over here we have more snake plants. And this one, when I bought it, it was only one. And I put it in a cute little pup, as like what santuarius do. Just, I love snake plants. They're really, really cool. And that's basically it, what I have in my kitchen. So yeah, now we gotta go. Oh, I think I already did this table pretty sure now it's the balcony all right here we have a really fun shingles plant that needs some watering and something to climb on um we have an aloha some succulents over there then we have this really fun interesting plant that i got from training shop collection but I'm struggling with it as you guys can see. My two really sad feather leaf calatheas. And then I have a Tritus Kentii over here in the back. I have this really fun palm. My money tree. We have my fiddle. Uh, ficus or tiniki. Some more succulents right there. A cactus right there. A limelight drancina and a uh, bromeliad over here. Then we have my hope philodendron, which is honestly enjoying the full sunlight. It's been putting out so many new leaves. Then we have my uh, Thai constellation, and then we have a uh, uh, small fiddle. It looks like many bugs, but it's like the perlite. A monstera, very good at yucca. Trust our Stramanti, Angel Wing Beglinda that I did about propagations. I get my variegated Trust our Stramanti, um, I think. And then we have my Pink Princess Philodendron, which just put out this new leaf. Um, it's really pretty. Nice, a nice pink splash right there. The thing is, it's kind of small compared to the other leaves, uh, so I'm a little bit scared about that. Then we have my green galaxy plant over there, our Monstera Peru. And we have over here some plants that I'm propagating, my variegated um, pitoto vine. We have another one. I just love how it looks. It's not really a house plant, it's like more of an outdoor plant, but I love it. And then we have a variegated maranta that I am propagating. Then I have two massive variegated marantas that I'm propagating in these cultivarium baskets because I like to reuse my pots. We got some monster pudu cuttings that I'm also propagating. So these two, I bought it on, I don't think it's here, it's in the, it's in the room. Um, I got it on a hanging basket from River Gardens for $24.99. It was trailing, it was so pretty. And I decided to chop them up by nodes and just put them in soil and make two new mother plants because it's just one of my favorite plants. I really, really do love this plant so freaking much. Sorry about my bad words. But um, I just, it's one of my favorites. I love it so much. And I decided to make two more because I want to propagate. I do want to sell some cuttings because like they're really, really expensive. And I think I can propagate some in four inch pots for like $5. Um, because I was trying to get my ha my hands on some and they, were on they weren't even like rooted, they were selling them and like by cuttings for like $20 or $30, which I mean, do you price your plants as how you want to price them? But I didn't have that much money and I wish I could have got like a cheaper one and thanks because of Rainbow Gardens. I, the first one that I got was this one on a four inch pot. I ended up placing it in this um, HGB, I think Maxim Miles cash pot. <laughs> it doesn't have a drainage hole so I just put it in there to um, keep the water in there, but it was a four inch pot for $10. And then I saw that hanging basket and I was like, God damn it. And I went back and nobody bought it. So I was like, I ended up taking it home. And um, yeah, I just, I'm really, really happy. So now I have more variegated Marantas. I just, I feel like I can never have enough. They're like, they're literally one of my top favorite plants. It's, I think I'm more in love with this one than my entire constellation. I'm grateful for this one. And it's one of my most expensive ones, but this one is just my all-time favorite like beautiful beautiful then we have my massive monster delicioso that is getting direct sunlight um i know scary but it's been doing pretty good and it's already been like a month of getting direct sunlight now it is going to become fall so the sun rays won't be as harsh but if i do see any damage i am going to put it back inside but what i've noticed since it's been getting a lot of light it's putting out some massive humongous leaves and 
oh my god it's just it's growing really really fast and i don't want to put it inside because i want it to thrive and put out some massive more some bigger leaves but yeah and then we have Adrian Cena over here in the back. And then over here, we have some green galaxy monster that I put cuttings that I'm doing. And moonshine tends to be real that it's funny putting out some beautiful more leaves since I'm giving them more light. Some succulents and cactuses over there, which are too far for me to show. And then over here, we have my watermelon pepperonia, which was looking so bad inside. And since I placed it outside, I think it's getting better. We have my carnivorous plants, um, variegated. God damn it, it's back to Italian, I believe. It's a piece in the Pistoli family. Um, we have a Drencina over here. We have my massive Drencina over here. And then we have this vine that you guys are seeing. It's from my Scandapsis. So that's from this side. I guess we can start from the shelves to the bottom to the top. Over here we have some Seba Blues that I'm propagating because I'm planning on doing a giveaway. I'm waiting for them to like get a little bit more bushy so I can give them away. Like, I'm going to give up possibly 10, and the rest I'm going to sell to get my money back. <laughs> but, um, yes. And then we have a really sad uh, asparagus fern, which is weird because, like, the one that I have inside is thriving, and this one was not. So, you know, they're all different. So, yeah, I put it outside, and it's doing pretty okay. All of these are fresh cuttings, except the Silver Blues, but all these micans you guys are seeing, I am propagating, and I'm going to go and sell them possibly for like five dollars once like they start to vine and they're really really fast to grow and right now i was looking at the facebook marketplace and offer up and they're so expensive still like by cuttings they're selling for like 15 dollars which i think is insane because they're so easy to grow all of these cuttings you guys are seeing literally came from a 2.5 inch pot which was this one and i finally repot it to this other pot which was a succulent it, it's one you know yeah i use my pots a lot but from one of those pots Two point, it was on a 2.5. I ended up putting it on the where is it? This one, and then it was getting more bigger. And I decided this morning to repot it on a hanging basket. And I also placed some more cuttings in there to give it more of a bushy look. And I chopped it up even more because the more you chop, the more bushier it just it gets. And um, yeah, I have all of these cuttings and this one as well. These cuttings, this micans, all came from this one plant. Yeah, this is one of the easiest plants out of all. I thought it was a silver blues because this is also really fast growing, very easy to propagate plants. But the micans is just so easy, um, which I think is insane. They're still really expensive. So that's why I'm propagating a lot and trying to make mother plants so I can just chop, 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 propagate, and sell. The more mother plants I have, as you guys see with the variegated marantas, the cheaper I can sell them. And that's what I'm trying to do. I, I want to make so many, but at the same time, I, I want to sell plants to make them more accessible for people because I know it sucks when you want to plant so bad but you don't really have the money, you're very limited. Girl, I got you. <laughs> but um, yes, I got a bunch of silver blues, some wide form Arizonias, and micans propagating on this shelf. And these are a little bit bigger because this is um, from Airways Market. They gave me like a vine, like an, uh, a developed plant with matured leaves. And so I had illustrations. Sorry, the truck is a little bit loud. Um, and those are the ones that I'm gonna give away, like the bigger leaves, because that's what I promised. But yeah, super, super cool. And then over here we have my Pink Splash Syngonia. Wasn't getting enough light, which is why it's putting out these really sad, um, not so variegated leaves. But it is putting out another new leaf, so I am hoping that it's gonna have more variegation on it. And I also ended up chopping, it was only one plant, and I chopped it up by nodes, and I made four new plants. So, and they're already putting out new leaves like this one. And yeah, there's four plants in here that I ended up propagating. I hope it works. If not, at least I have like an extra one. Like I feel like this one that's putting out a new leaf, it's really stable. And this other one over here is not looking that hot, but it's fine. Some are not gonna work out and some will. But I, it's a really, really fun syngonium. And then we have my variegated philodendron uh, burly marks keep forgetting the name but i have that one and then we have a philodendron in the back which i'm struggling with and i'm debating just giving it away we have some more micans that they're propagating and some mini monsteras as well we here we have my marble queen photos which is putting on new leaves so fun always so busy outside <laughs> but it's a really fun plant 
Marble Queen Potos. In the back, we have a really excited white color diffusion that I don't even want to show y'all. I, I don't even want to look at it. I just feel so bad. And we have my other um, four inch pot that I got from River Gardens for $10. Variegated Maranta, literally one of my favorite plants. I just love how the leaves look. So pretty. We have a Chinese evergreen in the back. We have my Singlenium Abatique. I gotta find out how I'm saying it because like I, I'm pretty sure I'm saying it correctly. But it's, it looks like the white butterfly Singlenium, but it's not. It's the um, Singlenium Abatique and supposedly it's rare. I don't know why. It looks so much like a white butterfly Singlenium, but it's really cool. We have a uh, Prince of Orange in the back. We have this really fun Sansevieria, Starfish Sansevieria. And then we have another node that I'm propagating of my medium Monstera. Another one over here. We have my Hope Pepperonia, Black Dragon Sansevieria. And then over here we have my massive Seawell Blue, one of my OG plants that I've ever had. A basket of medium Monsteras. No, I did not bought it from Costa Farm. I always reuse my pots. This was all propagated by nodes. And I actually have videos if you guys go way back. You guys will like see the video when I ended up propagating this one by nodes. It got really bushy and that's why I got all of these new cuttings. Because I don't know what to do with it. It's just, it's really pretty, but it gets really massive. And I don't have a lot of space right now. We have my Range Out Pepperonia, Manjulu Potos. Since I placed it outside of the leaves, they're starting to look a lot more like, like cream, yellow, orangey. I don't know. Um, really interesting we have my red stem and thurium looking so cute we have this string i see string of beans but people tell me on facebook this is the string of tears and the skin dapses that i showed you at the very top we have my um try to skin ti variegated lipstick plant my hope um the compacta which is honestly just thriving outside it has gotten so big so proud of her. We have my fishbone cactus, this pepperonia, this other Hoya Critia, Critias, like girl, I don't even know. But we have this one. And then we have my uh, string of dolphins. And then my other Hoya. And then we have my Brazil philodendron. Um, the Mykins that it's propagated by nodes, my other Hoya. So this Hoya looks like this, the white is on the outside, and then this Hoya, the white is on the inside. Oh my god, it's hard to like... <sighs> my arm's getting tired of like closing the phone, and it's kind of hard because like the back like... But let me see if I can show ya. See how the variegations on the inside? This one also had like really bad infestation with pests, but I think I already handled it. Um, here's my string of bananas. And that's basically it on the balcony. Got it. <laughs> I have a lot of plants. Um, and I want to propagate more because, y'all, propagating makes me so happy. It's just, it's so therapeutic making more plants and just seeing them, like, the, the progress. It's really fun. Um, I saw someone on Facebook having, like, a variegated Cebu Blue. I know, girl. She said it wasn't on the stem. It was only the leaves. So people don't know what it really is. And I was like, it's making me want to check my Steve Blue if I got lucky too. Which, no. But even then, it's a really beautiful plant. I don't know, like now I want to check like every plant that I see, even if it's like a basic plant, I want to check if it has variegation because like, you never know. It's a cool plant. But that's basically it, y'all. So I don't even have a thumbnail. So let me go in take some pictures and see if i can get something out of this i don't even know what okay i took balcony pictures and i might take some pictures on the plant wall i don't know i'm gonna decide later on but that's basically it oh Alrighty guys, so that's basically it for this houseplant tour. Thank you so much for joining me. I am so sorry for this being such a late video. Thank you so much for joining me. I, I really, really do appreciate if you watched it all the way to the end. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. <laughs> and I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye.
such a good sport, mama. You're such an amazing.